What's up guys, Rich Graham here, veteran Navy SEAL and instructor for Full Spectrum Warrior. Today we're going to talk about a tactical tip when it comes to shooting in low light situations with our precision rifle. So again, there's things that sometimes us in the shooting world kind of take for granted as common knowledge, but then again, we get some uh, students out here, they're new to shooting in general, new to shooting precision rifle or scoped weapons. And then these kind of questions come up and when we discuss it, they're like, oh man, I didn't know that. And once you hear it, you're like, wow, that's kind of common sense. But until you hear it, maybe it just kind of goes over your head as something like, oh, I never thought about it like that. So when we're looking at the scopes, let's talk about a few things real quick. So a few things that's going to help us determine for um, how much we're going to be able to see or how well we'll be able to see in low light situations. And I'm talking about low light. I'm not talking about like at night necessarily. We're talking dusk and dawn. If you're going to shoot at night, then we need some kind of, you know, um, you know, night vision uh, optic or a night vision uh, bolt on or, or mounted uh, imager that we can look through. So in that, a, a, a large objective lens is cool, but it's not necessary. So let's just talk about shooting in a low light situation like we're entering right now at twilight. The sun just went down behind the trees. It's not dark yet, but it's in that awkward twilight, dusk, dawn kind of light which is very popular for hunting. This is the time when, you know, the animals come out and if you're going to be deer hunting or something like that, this might be the time um, that you will be using your scope uh, or scoped rifle. So let's talk about this real quick. So in understanding two key features that we need for uh, improving the light that we're going to see, the illumination inside the optic itself, the first one is what is the size of our objective lens? The objective lens is the lens at the front of the scope looking downrange, right? So toward the barrel of the gun. The larger the objective lens, the more light we can take in, right? Now once that light comes in, if you look here, the tube, right? This tube here is a 34 millimeter tube. And this one is also a 34 millimeter tube. In some rifles, you'll see that this tube is more narrow. It might be a 30 millimeter. Um, sometimes it might even be smaller. But the smaller that tube, again, the less light that can come through. The larger the objective lens, in conjunction with the larger the tube, the more light we can let through. And this is going to be something that's critical for scopes that have lots of magnification. Because when we use the magnification on the rifle, the more we magnify it, the more light is necessary to keep a clear picture within the scope. With this being said, the more uh, magnification needs more light. When I'm trying to shoot at distances like here at 600 yards, or if we go up to the hill at 850 yards, we usually, to see the target clearly, we're normally zoomed way in. But what happens at the twilight hours, as we try to zoom in to see that target where we normally just jump right to our max magnification, when we do so, it actually makes it harder to see the target because there's not enough light coming into the scope. So one quick trick that we can do is to simply just zoom out. And although, you know, we're like, well, man, I, I want to be zoomed in so I can really like fine tune, you know, aim at this, at this object. Well, sometimes having a smaller target, right, in reference to your reticle, like so if this one's 25 power magnification, maybe I zoom out to 15. I can still shoot depending on the size of the target. I can still utilize 15 power magnification and still get good accurate hits. Maybe I zoom it down a little more, maybe 20 sufficient. This scope here is a 80 power, right? So 80 power on this one with the same lens, you know, as this one, if we're at 80 power, it might be super dark or super grainy and it might be really hard for me to see the target. And I'll show you guys this through the scopes here in a second, right? So again, I might take this one down to 30 or 50 versus being at 80, something that, that simple. So I'm going to show you that here in a minute. That's the first thing, right? So scope selection, if we're going to shoot at twilight hours a lot, what we're looking for is a large objective lens and a large tube so we can get that light. Now, 
The next thing, if we're going to shoot primarily at the twilight hours, our reticle or the type of this scope here is a first focal plane. And what that means is when I zoom the scope in and out, the crosshair stays in a consistent um, magnification with the dial. So if I'm using a reticle which has like a grid system in it, and I want that reticle to stay uh, true to the measurement, right? So if I'm using my reticle to measure, normally on a rear or second focal plane uh, scope like this one is, you have to be completely zoomed in to max magnification for you use the mills, right? Or the minutes of angle, depending on the type of reticle you have. But for me to use the reticle as a measuring tool, it needs to be fully zoomed in. What a first focal plane does, which is very popular, is as I do that, the grid adjusts so everything stays consistent. So the downside is for shooting in low light, let's say I'm going to zoom this 25 power scope down to 15 or 10 power, that reticle becomes super small and sometimes it's very hard to see unless we have an illuminated reticle that we can turn on. So we have a little red light or a little green glowing reticle so we can still see it. But if we're using like hunting purposes and things like that to where we're not really using a reticle for measuring and gauging distance or size of target and all that kind of stuff that we'd use more in like a tactical sense, then if you have, depending on who you're talking to, sometimes it's referred to as a second focal plane, a rear focal plane, a, a fixed reticle, right? There's different terms for this. But what this, these are all referring to is when I zoom in and zoom out, that reticle just stays the same size. The nice thing for that is if I'm not using, again, that measurement tool, then when I zoom out, I don't lose that reticle. And the reticle is still nice and big and clear. Uh, and then if I choose to turn on the illumination, I can, right? But again, it's just different things for different purposes, right? But just something to consider. So when we're choosing the, the scope style, we're choosing the, the reticle style, we're choosing um, which type of magnification do we have within that reticle, right? These are a few different things that we can take into consideration to kind of put the odds in our favor for shooting in low light. So hopefully that helps and makes sense. Now we'll take a look inside the scopes and we'll kind of let you see what we're talking about um, on all of these different options or all these different configurations that I was just speaking of. All right, so the first uh, scope we're gonna look through is a Steiner M5XI. This is a 25 power uh, optic, and again with a 56 millimeter uh, objective lens and a 34 millimeter tube. So this one is a first focal plane reticle, and I'm gonna show you what we're talking about as far as one, the clarity from 25 power down to 15, down to like eight power. And you'll see the clarity is better and better the more we're zoomed out. But with a first focal plane reticle, you're gonna see it's gonna be much harder to see the actual reticle on the target as we zoom out because it's gonna be so small. And with this low light, it's gonna be very hard to see even though we're aiming at a white target. So let's take a look through the reticle real quick at this. All right, so here we are. This is at 25 power, and now take a look at reference of the reticle. Don't worry that it's not necessarily, let me bring it in. There we are. So now it's on target. Okay, and I'll go ahead and turn that optic on one click. So now there's our illumination. So that's what we got. So not too bad. And then here we are at 15 power. My cell phone. So when I find that sweet spot, right there. Look how much brighter that is. But see how small the reticle now is. And then here we are at eight power. So at eight power, when you look at the inside the scope to outside the scope, it almost seems brighter in there than it does outside. But at this point. Even with the red illumination on, it's super hard to see that reticle. The reticle is tiny. So this is what I was talking about, you know, um, just different things to consider with having a fixed reticle. 
So I'm trying to show you guys that as best I can, holding my cell phone to the back of the scope. But you can see um, in this, what I may do is I might get on target, right? And if I'm searching for something in the low light, I might come down to like 10, 12 power so I have more clarity. Once I find the target, I will then zoom in, right, to get that reticle nice and large on the target until it gets to the point to where I'm, I'm losing visibility or it's getting too hard to see. And at that point I can stop and I can use that as my reference point to take my shot or to work from. But again, if I have moving targets or anything like that and I'm trying to use holds or call for windage, you know, if it's a windy day and I want to do like 0.2 left, 0.5 left or something like that, holding for the wind call, this will be more appropriate because I will still be able to use the reticle for those measurements for a moving target for a windy situation or anything like that you know um but as i zoom further out it's going to be really hard to see those uh those markings on the reticle for doing those types of procedures just because it's so dark and uh they're so small so let's take a look at the other style scope so you have a reference point all right, so here we go on this 338 Lapua, but it goes from 80 power down to 8 power. So let's zoom in. Let's go to 80 real quick. Let's see what it looks like at 80 and how much light is coming in and how much we can actually see. All right, so here we are at 80 power. And you can see in relation to through the scope to the side of the scope how dark that is in there, right? So now I'm going to go ahead, I turn that reticle on, it's just not zooming, it's not focusing on that reticle well. Right, but I'm going to go ahead and zoom this out from 80 to 50. All right, so here we are at 50 power. So again, it's pretty dark. Let's see if I can get this reticle to focus. But now at least we can see. So there's not enough light coming through. But you can see here when I came down from 80 to 50, that reticle is still the same size. And now if I dial down to 30, the reticle is the same size, and now we got more light coming through. I can get that parallax out. All right, so there's 30 power, but again, you can see the, the reticle in relation to the size of the target. We still have that full size reticle. That's at 30 power. And then let's come down to 15. That 15 power, a much brighter image inside the reticle. And we have a full size crosshair because as we zoom in and out, the crosshair doesn't change. So as I'm zooming out all the way, and then zooming in, right, from that to 80, from 80 down to 15, right, the main thing just to see here is that that reticle, as I'm zooming back out, that reticle doesn't change as I zoom in and out, right? So that is the nice thing about that. That's the nice thing about that fixed reticle or that rear focal plane uh, or second focal plane reticle. 
So you can see that's kind of like a, the nice thing about that rear focal plane or fixed focal plane, second focal plane uh, reticle is that basically as I zoom in and out, it stays the same size, easy to see. All right, so take a look at the sunset here. Now the sun's down, it's down behind the trees. We actually have the reds and the pinks in the sky. It's actually, it's getting pretty dark, right? It's kind of hard to tell through the camera sometimes. So now what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a couple shots. All right, so I have this scope zoomed in at 25 power. I turn the reticle on, right? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come on to that same target you guys are just looking at. That's roughly at 565 yards. And when I come into here, that target, like you almost can't even see it. It's it's like a like a white shadow, right inside the woods. Very very hard to see. Right. Okay. So I can still hit it, but if I'm searching for a target, like. A, if I didn't know that's what I was looking at, I wouldn't really be able to tell that, that it was that piece of steel. So I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna zoom out to 12 power, okay? So the reticle is gonna shrink because this is a first focal plane scope. But now coming back in, looking out there, now I can clearly see the piece of steel. It's still very dark. The reticle is small. And even though the reticle is very small, I can still make those hits. So you got to find that balance of, um, of the, the zoom that you're going to do based on the clarity of the target versus the clarity of the reticle as far as like the light and what it's allowing you to do. But again, just to kind of proof what we're talking about. And even with this, I'll take it down to a five power zoom so again we're at 565 yards i'm going to go down to a five power zoom on that piece of steel and now the reticle is going to be very tiny Dude, the mosquitoes are nasty <laughs> all right so i'm going to go down to a five power which most people wouldn't want to shoot 565 with a with a five power magnification because it's like well i can barely see the target because it's so small but in this case it's like i gotta do a balance of well yeah it's really small but it's so dark it's hard to see so find that good spot right cool so again just showing it works and then you can figure out when you're looking through your scope which is the best approach to do like I said I like to zoom out find the target so I have the most light and then zoom in to where um, I have the most magnification that I can still see clearly. And as I go, I might need to just tweak that a little bit as the night continues to set. Maybe I get to 15 power and then I take it back to 12 and then I take it back to 10 until you just can't see anymore at the minimal uh, magnification. All right, so we're going to wrap this video up because we are getting completely annihilated <laughs> by the mosquitoes uh -huh. and my cameraman is shaking all over the place. Along Excuse you, camera woman. Yeah, camera woman, camera lady. <laughs> Right? So, hope that helps. Um, if you haven't already, sign up for our Tactical Tuesday Tips. That's at fullspectrumwarrior.us forward slash tactical tips. Share this with a friend. Help us get around the al algorithm if you like this video. Also, if you like this shirt, check out Grunt Style. Uh, use code RICH15 and get 15% off your order when you shop at Grunt Style. Turn around, show the back. Yeah, check it out. Halloween's coming. Oh yeah. It's an, ang it's an angry grenade. Perfect. All right, have a good night.